<laughs> Welcome to this episode of the Barnacle Inspiration Series. It's another Phantom and Mocks episode. We do this every 10th episode. Uh, and hey, if you want to submit some of your own mocks to the show, you can do it through the submission email that's currently on your screen. There's no rules. There's no, your mock is too bad or your mock is too good. Your mock is just right. It's like Goldilocks. You can do whatever you want uh, and just break into people's houses and eat their porridge and sleep in their beds. Goldilocks was not a role model, but you're a role model because I said you were and you can submit whatever the heck you want. So we're going to go through 10 submissions today. Uh, Bear in mind, not all these were submitted by the people who made them. You can submit other stuff if you really want. You might be like, I don't build anything, but I'd love to submit something. You can do that too. Be your own Goldilocks. Weird... Uh, analog what's the word weird thing it's late I don't know anyway we're going to move over to the first mock it's by Sharik and this is Exotoa Armor Mark ah Roman numerals it's late ah seven a piece that I adore is used on this mock. It is the macaroni piece. Uh, and I, I don't know, I just love that aesthetic. Uh, you can see it on the upper torso, the bottom torso, and everywhere else in between. Uh, it's just such a beautiful piece when you um, kind of use a lot of it. When you get that repetition going, it just looks gorgeous. It has this uh, fantastic, almost sort of like veins or other kind of like robotic uh, tubing in different things. It just looks so organic and beautiful. Uh, and here, how it's been sort of beautifully integrated with other sort of tubing elements and different things it's a gorgeous aesthetic uh so if you look if you, you know a lot of binocle sets had tubes in them you could use flex tube as tubing uh there's probably a lot of different pieces that you could uh, get that same sort of effect with but uh, i don't know i haven't really checked bricklink i think tubes pretty easy to come by pretty cheap uh so definitely um you know, look into some of those pieces if you don't have them or if you do have them time to start playing with them uh, a lot of people tend to be using them these days and they get beautiful results like you can see here another beautiful result is the torso design i love how he's used this sort of larger disc piece and then a boat stud in the middle there that sort of trans yellow one there uh, and then this beautiful gold rim around the edge which i believe is one of the larger wagon wheel pieces ah, and it just makes for such a nice little uh, little little hint a little little pop of color there it's gorgeous it's absolutely lovely uh, and then we've got a tahu mask in black used for a large uh, almost like work boot of sorts although this is based off of the exo toa set so it's probably just some sort of like bulky foot uh, that the actual toa's foot you know is, is underneath that sort of like larger armor that goes around it and hey that totally matches that aesthetic it's a beautiful design and this is a beautiful take on a uh, you know mark 7 version uh, of the exo toa i adore this my friend mitch phillips built this next one and it is called etna I adore the aesthetic of this because, you know, I don't know, people use kranas these days. You know, it's a semi-common thing to see used, but I've never really seen it used in this context where there's a pretty ordinary body, but then the krana kind of flows into this almost like infected tentacle arm thing, and it's awesome. Uh, there's something very surprising about that. The fact that the, the Krana has these very kind of smooth outlines to it. It's a very different kind of Lego piece, right? The textures of it are so different from most other Bionicle pieces. I Kind of all the Krana were, but that one I think is a bit of an outlier in that regard. I guess it's because it's kind of that like rubbery material. I guess that's why. Regardless though, the fact that it's flowing into these tentacles, uh, it's uh, just some beautiful, um, it just complements it very nicely. I like that. Um, and uh, hey, again, some of those macaroni pieces being used but these are the bigger ones uh, that uh, I heard some people calling them Mickey Roni pieces because they first came in an old Mickey well not well old by the time of this video I think it's been out a couple years now but uh, that kind of very large like buildable statue of Mickey and Minnie Mouse they originally came in black and since then they've come in a variety of other colors like red here uh, and they work perfectly when you kind of flow them into other kind of like tail pieces and different things tentacles and stuff like that it looks gorgeous uh, so a great way to kind of partner in a crana there uh, I love the the torso design here, it's uh, Breeze's torso, or just the traditional torso that you saw on the 1.0 Hero Factory Heroes, uh, and I love how it's just sort of nicely complemented with uh, some sort of like support beams that kind of link down there onto the bottom of the waist, and uh, Mitch has taken what's otherwise a pretty sort of ordinary torso, it's just the prefab torso, there's nothing else to it, but he's just added that, and then a couple other details on sort of the sort of top there. And suddenly it looks like a much more sort of intricate, nicely done torso design. It's beautifully simple, but it 
so effectively just lifts that original piece there just by adding a couple additional support structures which again kind of ties into the the kind of like beam effect that you do actually see on that waist there just the way that that torso is designed just sort of uh almost like amplifying that it's a really nice idea and a really great way of doing that so a beautifully simple mock but man when you pay attention to how pieces look and then sort of play off of that uh it just elevates this mock to a whole nother level it's really really nice i love your work Let's move over now to the next mock. This is Trev Gard. Uh, well, this is by Trev Gard, rather. Uh, and he didn't have a name for this, but I'm going to call this Bug Boy, which is not a very creative name. But hey, you can maybe leave in the comments below a name that you might call this mock. But uh, Or maybe Trev can actually leave that in the comments because he didn't include it in the email. But, which is fine, by the way, I don't, I don't mind. Uh, but I love this. I love bugs just in general. Uh, and this is uh, a nice sort of humanoid bug-like character here. The head design's awesome using some of those sword pieces there for the sort of antenna. Uh, and then just the Borok eyes for the eyes themselves. Yeah, it's a very beautiful kind of like wasp-like look to that. It's awesome. Uh, the trans-colored pieces, I think, are also a nice touch. There's something surprisingly very bug-like about that. Nice color choice indeed. I always like seeing, too, the minifigure hand pieces being used as that kind of like furry texture that you often see on bugs. Uh, and those Gorast wings, they're the perfect piece to use if you're building some sort of insect or bug of sorts. Uh, this, it's just perfect. I mean, th that's exactly how wings look, and that piece is just I. Deal. So love your work here, good sir. This is a fantastic mock. Let's move over now to the next one. Uh, this is by Bonked Aniki, and this is Rena Toa of Water. I adore the weapon on this quite a lot. Um, the fact that it uh, is, you know, it's kind of two shades of blue. I guess that's kind of more purple. They're also translucent colors, but it's marked, it's markably different from the dark blue and the silver that's being used here, but there's still elements of blue. So I love the idea of the weapon still resembling elements of the color scheme, but being still slightly different in that sense. Uh, and I've, I've kind of made this uh, analog before where I've said, you know, a knight doesn't go out into the battlefield and go, ah... My arm is silver, my sword also needs to be silver. Or my arm is yellow, my sword has to also be yellow. That's not always how it works, right? The swords can be whatever color you want, especially if there's some sort of special sword that has elemental powers. It makes sense if it's like red or on fire or has... I don't know, gas coming off of it because it's got some like poison effect or something cool. Who knows? Um, so I love the idea of playing around with the color schemes on your weapon. But hey, if you want it to just be a flat silver or match the color scheme of your mock, because hey, I'm sure some knights are fashionistas and they're like, no, my sword needs to be purple, just like my armor. I think all of them make sense. You can do whatever you want with your mock. Uh, but uh, it's a nice little touch there. Uh, and I mean, hey, you could have easily put some of those lightning effects uh, that are on the sword there onto the actual mock. I think it would have worked very well as well. Uh, so yeah, all in all, it's a, a great little design there, that's for sure. I'm very happy to see a couple pieces being used here, like the Rakshi leg pieces. They're being used there on the upper arms. And I don't know, you just don't really see that piece being used all that often. It was kind of a weird piece, kind of only came on the Rakshi. Uh, so just lovely to see that being used. And then lovely to see the uh, Gully Mystica mask being used, because I know so many people who despise that mask. Fair enough, it's not the best Bionicle mask, but it's still a good Bionicle mask. Uh, so it's nice to see it being uh, beautifully incorporated into this mock here. Very, very nice. On to the next one. Uh, this one here is built by Nice Lad SM. And now he simply called this unnamed Fire Matoran and he said, Hey Ben, can you give it a goofy name? Mission accepted. Uh, so unnamed Fire Matoran UFM, let's call him Uncle Fred Marf. Well, just Marf. Marf's good. Um, or if you want to give him a serious name, I thought Ikara the Seeker. So you can pick from those. Or again, if you have a cool name, you can leave it in the comments below. I'm keen to hear your thoughts. Um, so I adore this. This is a very sort of like Mouth of Sauron, um, as in the moderator on uh, the Discord server. Nice guy who tends to build a lot of different Matoran stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a, a really fun aesthetic. One of my favorite details is the kind of rubber band on the back there. Certainly not an official rubber band, but eh, who cares? You can use rubber bands from around your house. Uh, but the idea of kind of wrapping the um, sort of Lego kind of treasure chest piece there is awesome. Uh, there's some real nice sort of like wanderer kind of uh, vibes to this guy here. You know, he's got very few items, but he can sort of stash them on his back there and just kind of ties them around and gets the job done. Uh, and I love this sort of like makeshift pole that's... Uh, uh, it's sort of drooping a little bit, but uh, it gets the job done, and it's got the little lantern on the end there. So, uh, 
yeah, it's just a fun aesthetic. It looks so like thrown together and just using, uh, you know, the, the resources that he had around him to, uh, you know, make do with what he's got sort of thing. It's a, it's a great vibe. Uh, and I think that's also kind of conveyed with the asymmetry on this guy too, with a, a lot of silver all throughout, but then bits of um, orange and red thrown in there as well. It's a, it's a, a little bit of asymmetry always, always looks good, I think. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, just a really fun, clever build and a unique way of uh, photographing this too, putting them on a Technic beam there and just sort of holding them up to the wall. I've not seen that before, but it, got there, it gets the job done. Uh, so yes, I adore this. Very, very cool. On to the next one. Uh, this is built by Yannick Gotts, and this is oh, the Holy Gunslinger Speak No Evil. Uh, I, I love this so much. This is great fun. Uh, the idea of using some of these balloon pieces, these specifically came on this elf set, but uh, actually in my most recent video about uh, Brickvention, all the Bionicle mocks that were on display there, definitely check that out. There was a lot of really good stuff for Brickvention this year and more Brickvention videos to come, don't you worry. Uh, those balloon pieces were used on a lot of different mocks. They're a very helpful piece to have. So again, if, you, if you're looking on Bricklink right now and you're like, what can I add to my order to help me out with my building? Get some of those balloon pieces. Uh, but I love the way they've been used here because there's this lovely sense of like you know they're kind of blowing in the breeze it's this sort of like tattered cloth they're off at different angles and things like that uh, and I think that's really serviced by the way that those balloon pieces beautifully curve um, it just looks awesome and the way it's kind of been wrapped around there like it's almost sort of like a poncho of sorts so cool uh, and then just also the kind of like almost steampunk vibes to this mock, mainly in the color scheme and the weapon. Uh, I love this weapon. The fact that it has this like glass container at the top. And then there's more kind of like glass containers on his belt there. I don't know if that's like ammo or if that's like some drinks that he's got stored in his belt. Maybe they're a little too small for that, but uh, it seems like it ties in with the gun. Um, that's just unique and fun. And I love some of the gold highlights, like the chain on the boot uh, and then the gold flower piece there on the belt as well. It just looks so cool. Uh, and also the fact that there's, uh, you know, pretty like Western colors, you know, brown, silver, dark brown, little hints of black, the, you know, dark, um, dark blue jeans. I even said dark green for some reason. Like I said, it's late. Uh, but, you know, they're very Western colors. That's what you would expect on a cowboy or a gunslinger. And then he's got a purple mask and the lavender, um, uh, you know, a poncho of sorts. Love that contrast. It just works well, you know, really, really cool. So, uh, yeah, just a lot of character to this. It just looks so, so cool. And those piercing eyes. I'm, I could keep talking about this, but it's time to move on to the next mark. This is this is gorgeous, though. Love your work, Yanni. On to the next one. This is uh, also by Trev Guard. I didn't mean to put him in twice, but hey, lucky you. That's what happens when I record late. I mess up anyway. Uh, and uh, this is Nekata Rework. We got some more asymmetry. Uh, I get the sense that this is almost sort of like an infection that's taking over this character here, especially with the way that this sort of like tentacle arm works. The fact, too, that that uh, tentacle arm ends with that little uh, crystal piece that came on the Monster Fighters sets. It's a nice inclusion. It's a nice way to kind of uh, just sort of tie off that trans purple there. Uh, and uh, I don't know, kind of weaponize the arm, I guess. It looks like something that you would stab someone with or something like that. It's a, it's a very nice touch. Uh, I also like the fact that there is a protector mask there on the torso. It's a nice way of just adding in some more hints of trans purple because you know all of those masks had that uh, kind of marble translucent color mixed with the sort of primary color. Uh, in this case, black, in other cases, like white and, you know, red and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it works really well. And it's just kind of a nice way of rounding off that torso there. It looks really cool. Um, yeah, and great to see that sort of digitally grade leg design there. Really nice. On to the next one. Uh, this is uh, da uh, by Damascus Mox. Uh, and this is Rage Incarnate. Uh, the torso really grabbed me with this one here. I like the fact that, uh, once again, it's asymmetrical. A uh, little bit of red, a little bit of blue on the other side there. To me, it kind of almost looks like, uh, you know, maybe this guy has control over, you know, two different elements or something. Or, uh, you know, he's got some sort of intricate, like, weapon or device or it's just a part of his torso or whatever. And there's kind of, like, markings on both sides to you know, represent some sort of elemental power or something. Uh, and yeah, I, don't know, I can kind of see those colors glowing on his chest and then uh, the, the sort of like green area in the middle there lights up and a big beam shoots out of his chest or something. Maybe that's not the intention, but that's what I see. And I think that's kind of cool. Uh, and again, I like the idea of adding weird colors for weapons and things like that. It's a nice idea. Uh, so great to see uh, the Lava Beast headpiece being used here on the head of the mock. Again, that's kind of a piece that 
you don't really see being used every day and yet it's still a pretty cool piece so nice to see that uh, and just nice to see in general just a, a very sort of large imposing character here with lots of spikes and different things and horns and things like that he certainly looks like rage incarnate uh, he certainly fits his name there uh, and it's a, a pretty awesome looking mark as well so love your work on to the next one this is by aj red and this is king of pentacles I love this a lot. Uh, I know I've said that about most of these, but I really do love it. I love Bionicle in general. You're going to always hear me say that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but the fact that it's sitting on a throne is cool. And this is a really nicely built throne as well. You can see when you kind of look at the base of it, uh, there's a whole bunch of those different Technic connector pieces. And then kind of rounding it off on the edges with some of those larger claws, it certainly gets the job done. Uh, I love his uh, like jewelry, some of his bling. It looks fantastic. The, the crown design using some of those interesting... Uh, like Nexo Knight shield pieces there in gold, and the little hints of it in uh, sand green as well. It looks like there's some age or some moss or some fading or whatever on the crown. Uh, it's a nice detail, and hey, who's to say that he kind of ran out of some of those gold pieces and then was like, yeah, I'll use some of the sand green ones. you got to turn those obstacles into an opportunity. That's awesome. Uh, I also enjoy the leg design, the fact that his uh, bone has broken there. There's the one that still has a bit of armor on it, uh, but the other one, of course, has those cow horn pieces, so it looks like the bone has been fractured or broken in some fashion. Such a fun detail. Uh, and uh, a clever idea, too, because maybe you could be like, how do I connect this leg, you know, the, the foot to, to, the, to the rest of the leg and stuff like that? Maybe you don't have to. You can have it be separate like that. And yeah, maybe turn an obstacle into an opportunity. And uh, hey, you, now he's got a broken bone because he's just a dude made of bones. That's what happens to bones sometimes. So nice i think it's a clever idea whether or not he was that, that that was his actual thought process of like oh god what do i do hey what if i try this i don't know that might have always been his intention but uh yeah, it works um but yeah a really fun mock and a very clever concept and always nice to see thrones uh, any bionicle sitting on a throne is going to look awesome so love your work here good sir this has uh, a lot of fantastic techniques in it uh and uh also some nice use of rubber bands as well. Pretty cool. Let's move over now to the last mark. This is the one from the thumbnail that you're probably all waiting for. It is by Jafer, and this is Sands. So I saw this in person at uh, Brickvention, and uh, Jafer was sort of talking about how he built the head design and saying how complex it was having to shift from you know studs up to studs down and doing all sorts of craziness. Uh, it was a whole process, and he said it was certainly not an easy thing to make, but he got it done, uh, and that's awesome. Uh, and, and man, he perfectly captured the face design there. One of my favorite details with it is the teeth. Uh, if you look closely, you can see that those uh, sort of like the, the black bits in between each of the different uh, uh, teeth there, uh, that appears to be like string or well, I think it's string. It's not rubber bands. Uh, what a great way of doing that because, you know, maybe you could sort of slave over doing some sort of snot techniques and things like that. So that he has the individual teeth with like tiles or quarter tiles or something like that. But it might be too hard and it might just not work with the rest of the head. So why not just substitute in some string, wrap it around that tile there, and boom, you've got a beautiful looking tooth design. Great idea. Awesome idea. Uh, I love this jacket design too, uh, using some of these ribbed hose pieces here uh, to form the kind of like zipper effect. Genius idea. Uh, and then also the idea of his hands being in his pockets there. Uh, but uh, just simply building that uh, with some of those um, curved slope pieces there and not actually building any hands. He doesn't actually need to be putting into it, uh, putting it into his pocket there. Uh, it can just be implied just the way that they sort of overlap over each other there. Very smart and certainly gets the job done and certainly looks cool. Um, yeah, just great to see this perfectly capturing the original source material and so many fantastic layer techniques in this. And also, if you want to build this, there are instructions available for this. Head over to Jafer's Flickr and you can learn more about that. There are links in the description below. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I showed you how you can submit your stuff at the start of the episode. Go back to that if you're interested. Uh, and uh, check the links in the description for some of my own social media and the mocks that you saw in today's episode. Uh, and happy building. Bye for now. I'll see you in the next one, guys.